Hello, folks at home. As you know, I'm Chris, and I am joined by Emily. Emily is uh, a YouTuber. She plays music, but the interesting thing about her music is that it's made using entirely free and open source software, which is excellent. And I know you guys are going to love that. So um, before we kick off proper, uh, Emily, uh, tell us about your channel, because it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> cool. Um, yes, hello, everyone. I started making videos probably about six years ago. <laughs> and I've always grown up using Linux, so obviously for me that was what I used. Um, and I make lots of covers of songs that are out now, loads of different types of music, and I also write original songs. I wrote an album just before I did A-levels and recorded and released all of that on free and open source software, including all the photography, art, um, and everything else that goes along with an album. So yeah, it's been a bit of a journey, wow, <laughs> learning how to use amazing. everything from scratch and all the yeah all this software yeah. yeah and it really i mean it really is a, it, like a journey it takes a lot of sort of working through but once once you've done it you have that kind of like that that essence of freedom don't you yeah yeah i like it like, um yeah being able to use have everything i use just as being available for anyone and you know everyone can contribute not that, that i have managed yet but you know it's a thing i could do if i wanted to um <laughs> yeah well, I mean, your your music and your channel is like a contribution as well, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> what's the point of making all these fantastic free and open source tools if they're not going to be used to actually sort of create music? Yeah, to be so, fair, that was probably one of my proudest bits was uh, Jonathan Thomas, the creative open shop, posted me on the open shop page on a blog, and I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that video since got muted because of copyright, but <laughs> sad times, <laughs> but I was on there anyway. <laughs> wow, yeah. So um, I'm going to ask the question that, that is like the first on everyone's list. And um, anyone in the chat, feel free to chime in with um, with any questions that you might have or any any thoughts. But uh, the question that, that that we usually ask first is, what kind of distribution do you use, and why do you use it, and what do you like about it? Um, so I use Linux Mint Debian Edition. To be honest, I'm not really sure why I chose it. So I grew up, my dad is a hardcore Gen 2 user, which is oh. great because originally people were like, oh, what distro do you use? And like Gen 2, and they're like, whoa, you're so hardcore. Oh. But really, it's just because my dad did it. <laughs> um, so I grew up using that, and then I switched at some point to Linux Mint and then switched to Debian Edition after I got fed up with the having to reinstall it thing, um, like the rolling release being much better for me. Um, and I guess, I don't know, I like it because there's a lot of support online for it. <laughs> yeah. um, and most things you can get to work fairly easily in it. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Mint. I think it's, I think it's yeah. brilliant. It was, it was one of the earlier distributions I used. And I've never used the Debian edition, which is the rolling release based on yeah. testing. And the reason I've kind of been put off it is because it seems like it's their third most important distribution next to their Mate and Cinnamon releases. So I always kind of feel that there might not necessarily be the community and the support behind it. But I mean, I mean, you, you know better than I do, what's the... Uh... I mean, it is true that when you look up stuff, you're much more likely to find people doing just normal Linux Mint rather than Debian Edition, but I don't know. So yeah, it seems to be that there's enough to get by, so I don't know. Yeah. And and it seems like with you being in the in the multimedia space, um, you you need to have more up to date software than what Mint might might give you. And I suppose Debian Edition will give you that if it's on testing. Yeah, I guess uh, maybe I'm not really that. But like, to be fair, actually, mm -hmm. most of my software is probably quite old. I haven't managed to get the new OpenShot to work yet because their app image, which supposedly just works out of the box on every distribution, has not worked on my distributions <laughs> um, so I was still using a very old version of that and I used Arda 2 for quite a while even when Arda 3 was out but uh, I don't know for me I kind of well if it works don't, don't break it well, thing, so, which probably yeah. isn't the philosophy that you think on a Debian machine but I don't know I, I kind of go with what what's happening well, really. it, I think it, it, it is it does seem to be something that suits the the Linux Mint kind of philosophy that they're mm. they're quite cautious of breakages and yeah like with a working machine, that's what you need. You need something that you yeah. can turn on, you can go, and it's reliable. And the latest and greatest software for most users is probably not going to be top of their list. Mm. The reason why I'm always after the the latest and greatest software is because I'm you know I'm sort of into it, but also yeah, yeah. because um, I do video editing as well. And with video editing, it's gotten so much better in the past two, three, five years that you just really want to be on the, on the sort of newer end of that spectrum just to take advantage of all the brilliant benefits. 
So I took a I took a look at Ardor a while ago when I was thinking about trying to do something with music and see what the free mm -hmm. open source options were. Oh boy, did it intimidate me. Uh, <laughs> See, I, I like Audacity. It's simple. It just it does everything on a straight line, or the the effects. But but that's for talking, and talking's mm. like compared to music, talking's easy <laughs> uh, to work with. Um, I've done a little work with microphones, but it's only ever been with like panels and conferences and things like that. So when you've got all of the gubbins that our door th seems to throw at you, like that's for serious music people. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what what drew you to it and 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 sort of what what do you like about that particular software um to be honest i don't think i ever use anything different i think my dad pointed it out to me it was in a magazine that he was reading and was like oh have you seen this and then i used it i'm not sure they use audacity right at the beginning but um i guess because for me i learned from scratch in both not not just like audio editing it use like from there yeah, sorry <laughs> started from scratch in both recording music and using the software the Voss software that I kind of learned to use Arda as I learned to do music. So I like look back at my first recordings and everything's panned dead center. There's no reverb. I was like, what is reverb? What's a plugin? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so it was like very, I got the audio in, but didn't really do anything else. What's compression? Like all this stuff now that I put everywhere and have learned yeah. to still very much learning, but <laughs> at least could yeah. use it a bit now. Um, yeah. Learning I mean, it from I've... scratch was all right because I did it bit by bit. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm very impressed with like the, the 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 visual effects of your channel. Like, there was the the one video, uh, I think it's an original song where there's three versions of you, and there's like one of you in the window. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how difficult was that? Um, it's actually pretty easy. Like, I just put a um, as long as you don't move the camera, that's the scary thing. <laughs> or, the and thing, and yeah. the lighting going slightly weird between different count like shots. But in general, like, I just put a mask over it. In Open Shot, you can just put a mask down. And just did it so that they were ordered to get the right ones going through. I think one of the first videos I did, it's funny because I have an old channel with all the videos on private of when I did like six, seven <laughs> years ago. And um, one of them I did it, I managed to do it wrong. And I had the microphone stand, I had one of me like sitting on the floor and one on a chair. And the microphone stand went in front of me sitting on the floor. So the <laughs> microphone stand kind of just disappeared into thin air halfway down. <laughs> so I've got this whole video of like a floating microphone stand. But. Oh, um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and check that. <laughs> well, it's on private, so sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll roll them out <laughs> oh, awesome. for giggles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, so. Apart from our door and Open Shot, now because I I also had a problem with the new Open Shot. I'm on Manjaro, which mm -hmm. is sort of Arch. I I I, th I see Manjaro to Arch as Linux Mint to Ubuntu, if that makes any sense. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So like Manjaro, it's it's a little bit more focused on stability. It's a little bit more focused on a smooth user experience on a on a rolling distribution, but it's a bit more bleeding edge, and it sort of meets up with Arch that way, um, and that's really good for um, for stability and 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 the latest and greatest software. Um, I with with them, um, but I, I use Mint. I must use Mint for about two three years before I actually made the jump to. To Manjaro, and the reason I did that was because Caden Live was stable. Mm. <laughs> when like, I love Caden Live. That's that's like my video editor, and mm. um, it, it it seems to have alternating release. Like one release is perfectly stable, brilliant. I get really excited about it, and then the next release is oh, they try something new and it's all crumbling. But and then the next one is back on track, and then so sometimes you might have like rollback releases and so forth. But with Mint, I had like the the setup that I wanted, and it just lasted for about two years without really thinking about it too much. But I got the OpenShot 2.0, which is the new one, which was just released. Mm -hmm. That came through the repositories quite recently for Manjaro. And I did find that a little buggy. It did seem to crash and there were... Yeah. Uh, but I don't... Like, the trouble is you don't know whether or not it's the Manjaro implementation of it or whether or not it's because it's new or... Yeah. Whatever. I mean, I think video editing is one thing that people who who use other software would probably look at me editing a video and go why are you doing this because like I, I have used the same open shop for years I'm fairly sure because it's still a really old version and it does crash an awful lot but then I do I think I've once had like 20 something videos at once so I mean I do push it quite a lot <laughs> but like it probably it crashes quite an awful lot but so a like normal part of my workflow is oh, workflow is open open shot again but like yeah. 
I don't know, it works. <laughs> it gets the videos out and it does what yeah. I need it to do. I open shot too when I tried it was interesting because I have my workflow on OpenShot and then some things had changed and I was like, mm. I'm not sure whether this is a bug that I can't get it to work or what, yeah, like you, or whether it's a, I, I just haven't worked out how to use this fancy new keyframe feature. I, yeah, like in yeah. theory, it looked, it's, it's annoying because it's so exciting in what it could do. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I really want it to work. And then it either crashes a lot on Ubuntu, even worse than my other <laughs> OpenShot, <laughs> or um, I can't get it to run. But I'm, I'm still holding out for sometime soon it running and mm. not crashing so much and hopefully because <laughs> yeah like and i feel very loyal to open shot now having you know been on the website and stuff <laughs> and used it this time so i don't really want to switch and i do really like it i'm just yeah. hoping for a bit more stability soon <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I really liked it that th it was stable for a really long time back in version one that was about and i, I did use it a little bit for the more um for, for, for if I wanted to do like just something simple like a slideshow and I like the you know the presets are nice so you can just drop stuff in and if you you know and it's good to good to go I never really got more into the advanced features but Caden Live it was quite um it, it fit my workflow a little better because Caden Live is, is similar to Sony Vegas Pro mm, right so like you've so you've always been a Linux person has there mm -hmm. ever been like a, so you've never never been a Windows person no, it's basically a swear word in my house. So. <laughs> it's like the evil Microsoft, the, the evil Apple, even mm. the evil Google, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> even though they're not really. Mm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Microsoft got called up in the in the European Union for for taking too much information out of their their operating system. So, you know, it's uh, I can certainly see the um, I can certainly see the. Uh, the the sentiment there definitely <laughs> my uh, but my my mum uses Linux she uses Lubuntu which is oh, <laughs> oh which wait no I'm uh, thinking of a different one sorry carry on <laughs> <laughs> and Lubuntu is the, the the Ubuntu with LXDE and that's a really unusual choice for someone who's not particularly tech savvy like my mum mm. but she had a like a, she had a rickety old laptop I fixed that up for, for her and I used Lubuntu then and that was um, that worked really really well because it was quite a straightforward distribution mm. with um, with with uh, with the with the, with the ability to run on just about any kind of hardware, um, but now she's got better and better hardware. She now um, pretty much only wants to use LXDE, <laughs> <laughs> which is which is, which is quite interesting. So she's got like quite a fast laptop now with um, with a LXDE on, but she has never had a single problem um, working with it. She works in local government as well with with a yeah. few other things like that so she, so her work sort of you know reliability is that thing that mm. that is absolutely paramount and we and, and i gotta say like she, you know she she sort of asked me for some help with linux and and and, and i gotta say you know that's that's a really good it's, it's really good when you can sort of recommend Linux to someone and it's exactly what they need and then they yeah. sort of run with it i think there's um, definitely like a big i mean some of it okay it's justified but a big stigma with anything linux that's like you know, you have to be really, really, really techy to be able to do anything with it. And that's just mm. not true. Like, all anytime I've, like, installation possibly, if you have someone to help you, you'd be totally fine. But, like, and some, some of them are really easy, like Ubuntu's installer, even yeah. easier than Windows. I'm sure if people tried to install Windows, they'd have more problems <laughs> than installing Ubuntu. Um, yeah. And, yeah, loads of people moaning about how Windows updates breaks things all the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not like Linux has, you know, problems and nothing else does. It, sometimes it feels more like that people would have less problems if they just kind of had a go but <laughs> it's kind of helpful I guess if you know someone like your mum knows you and same with my granddad yeah. uses well gen 2 Linux <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's obviously because my dad maintains it for him and everything and can log in remotely mm. and saw him out if he's put something in the bin by accident you know it's oh yeah but... <laughs> Yeah, so, I suppose like SSHing in to mm. do a bit of remote. I never do yeah. that, and I should really set up a workflow for that. <laughs> that would help me so many times. I've I got to ask about Gentoo, to be honest, because <laughs> I've, I've never been brave enough to, to try Gentoo. Everyone, you know, it's become a little bit of a meme that it is just so difficult to use. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, is it difficult to use? Because I suppose growing up with Gentoo... Well, using it, is a very different beast to having to install it yourself. I don't know. So like using it basically was we just had a GNOME 2 environment and it was the same for me as it would have been on any other distribution. If I had a problem, I was like, Dad, help me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I mean, I could I could install basic stuff by myself, like 
compile them or whatever. But if anything went wrong, I'd have no idea what to do. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I mean, it's time consuming. <laughs> He'd spend yeah. hours updating everything and every time that an update would happen, things would break and you have to sort it all out yourself. So you like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to try it myself, to be honest. <laughs> um, and I know it caused my mum's computer to get very out of date because she would not let him touch it <laughs> in case ah, it yes. broke while she had something important to do. And she always had something important to do. So, you know, it never mm -hmm. got updated until he got a new computer, moved it all over to that, and then gave her that new one <laughs> and said, look, this now works. And then you can update the other one. But like, yeah. So I, I wouldn't, it, I, I feel like it's a fun intellectual exercise, but I wouldn't want to be using it for a day-to-day -day system because it just would take up too much time. <laughs> um, so do, you, do you remember Twitch plays Pokemon? No. <laughs> oh, oh, that was quite an interesting thing. Basically on Twitch, um, someone programmed in a game of Pokemon and people could play the game on based on votes. So they vote for every key press and <laughs> to see if you could actually finish Pokemon from beginning to end. I can't remember whether or not they did it or whether or not they just kind of got themselves stuck in a corner or something and, and, and unable to get out of it. Um, but someone took that idea and they tried to make a Let's um, uh, uh, Twitch installs Arch, right. uh, which is the which is was the attempt to install Arch through like a democratic process on Twitch. But, um, <laughs> it got hacked pretty quickly. So. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> which was a, which was a bit of a shame, but that it would be good to do that with Gentoo if you could get it. Like just sort of, <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> a group of random strangers on the net just try and <laughs> try and install Gentoo. Press some buttons. <laughs> yeah. When it when it comes to the sort of free and open source software, like a lot of people are, appeal to different sides of it because it's a pretty, mm -hmm. it's a pretty large and encompassing thing. Like the thing that drew me towards it was I was at university, and when you're at university, you're trying to save as much money as you can. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah, like free and open source software allowed me to to try out and, and learn all these different skills, video editing and, you know, working on distributions and, and even a little bit of developing apps and, you know, just working on this in your free time. There is no way I would have been able to have afforded Sony Vegas Pro when I was back at university on, yeah. you know, on, 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 a, on a student's budget. That, that That's like 200 quid. <laughs> so, and, you know, as a student, you've got lots of time, not much money. So open source does seem to be uh, like a logical step and that's quite possibly why you do see a fair amount of linux in in universities these days but as sort of time goes by i was opened up to the you know the other elements of it the the source code elements the community elements of it um the the philosophy that it, that a lot of it is your choice and how you know it's your system you get to design it as you want and these things were, were things that grew on me over time it was always the initial um, it was that open source software basically lowered the bar to entry for me with with computers in general. Um, so, like, what when it comes to like the various facets of, of free and open source software? Obviously, you come from a free and open source family. Mm. Although I suppose that is a strange way. Of <laughs> but that's <was> true. <laughs> <laughs> so, was it just something that was always a part of your life, or was is there something about the free and open source uh, movement specifically that that really sort of uh, energizes you? Um, I think it, pro it probably did just start out of a, this is what we use, but I was always quite passionate about it then at school or whatever, when we're forced to use Windows, I'm like, why do we have to use this rubbish? <laughs> I want my Linux like, back. But like, I think I'm grateful for having grown up with it because I did computer science at uni and I went to an all girls school, so I would never have been, I mean, not that that's um, a correlation, but well, it is a correlation, but not guaranteed uh -huh. that I wouldn't have known about computer science really otherwise. We had IT, but that's basically Microsoft Office studies. So um, so having grown up with the system, it kind of encouraged me more to yeah, look at it and you know, write in a terminal occasion, you know, oh, this is actually how a computer works and some of the more back end stuff, which was really cool. Um, so yeah, that helped me to go do computer science. But then also, yeah, I, I, I like the idea of everyone being able to contribute and just be re like being able to share things freely and things that influences my music as well. All my music is released under Creative Commons. I don't really like have full copyright over it. I'm like, share it if you want, as long as you <laughs> tell people where it's from and that it's me, like, I'm fine. So I don't know, I quite like that philosophy in general. <laughs> awesome, I yeah. Guess. I think it, it is because it's a little less greedy and it's a little bit more thinking of the wider, you know, it's, th it's thinking about how your personal actions affect the world. And, and like, 
you know, if you're developing a piece of software or if you're even using and supporting a piece of software, um, it's nice that, that, you know, those individual actions, so it, it's recognized how they fit into the, the wider world and the wider framework. It's not just you buy something, you use it, you throw it away. It's, mm. you know, there's substantially more to it than that. And I think the end result for whatever it is that you create or you you use, I feel, and I, you know, this is definitely a subjective feeling that you have like more ownership over it um, or not more ownership that it's more yours. That there is more of an attachment to you for it because it's not the, it's not the product of of um, a piece of software that's developed by a big company far away. It's the uh, sort of the amalgamous effort of not not just you, but the people that develop the software, the people that develop the infrastructure for the software. And it's even though that doesn't change from free to proprietary software, free software definitely recognizes the the work and the back end and the the stuff that goes on behind you know behind that and the the knock on effect that is you know that your actions have on on the world, which is. Which is which is amazing, I think. Anyway, yeah. And uh, you know, the the knock on to that as well is is um, free and open source software. Now it's being deployed in developing countries where it's used for education and um, so, sort of uh, political organisations and campaigning for rights and all that kind of thing. So, you know, it, it's great that that you know we in in a in a like in a, in a developed country with a lot of advantages that that brings. Can then you know support a movement which then goes on to help people all over the world for all different kinds of reasons as well and it's great because you know if like i can only speak for myself but i don't know the first thing about how to how to to to, to live and survive in in most of the rest of the world i'm pretty sheltered if i'm completely honest but it is it is great that um i can be part of something that's still a positive influence um despite my my personal ignorance which i think is really quite good yeah I guess the other thing that I like about <clears throat> like the open source software in general is that with it, I guess it's probably less the fact that it's open source and more just that it's less well known the like monopoly that Microsoft used to have and still yeah. largely has on on the um the market and you know you go to school and all your machines run windows and you use Microsoft Office and like literally no people didn't even know there was any alternatives and I'm like, you're paying quite a lot of money. Like, it's not insignificant <laughs> to have these things. I mean, okay, if it comes on your laptop, it's less. But again, that's so that they get you. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know, that, there's something about that I really don't like. It's like people just don't really have a choice because they don't know about it. Um, that's it, yeah. And yeah, so <laughs> I was always a <laughs> passionate advocate for... I, in, I think in year 11, I did a, a... Not a dissertation, a project thing about whether schools should be using Linux or Windows. <laughs> Awesome, um, so I used to go to the library and then kind of just get distracted reading loads of articles and then think, okay, I've achieved nothing in two hours and have to do it later. But like, yeah, that was quite fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's very similar to my story. But then with that wasted time, I made YouTube videos, <laughs> <laughs> which is, yeah, it's, it, and it sucks you in. It's great. Like I can't like explaining this to other people is incredibly difficult to do mm -hmm. because getting excited about a new version of a piece of software like especially you know maybe it's something to do with, with networking or maybe it's something to do with icons or something <laughs> and getting excited about that is it seems really dorky yeah. and I think <laughs> I'm at the stage now where I'm not even embarrassed about it and uh, you know it's kind of nice to, to, to sound smart about something despite the fact that half like half of this stuff really isn't that <laughs> complicated if you if you sort of lay yeah. it out yeah the, I had that to quite an extreme extent as well then it was nice going to uni for me because I oh yeah I went to an all girls school and I was literally the weirdo who likes computers and everyone hated even like IT and I was like hey oh, yeah, all Linux this <laughs> like all this um, and everyone just thinks I'm really weird you know gonna take over the world one day and take down Microsoft or something that was the, <laughs> that was their idea but then I went to university and did computer science as I say um, at Cambridge and like everyone just loves it and so you're just chatting to people and it's just totally normal and you can have all the and everyone had heard of Linux. I'd got used to being like, oh, I use Linux. Then was like blank face. And all these people I'd go to automatically explain it. They're like, oh, no, we know what that is. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this is a whole different world. So, yeah, it's nice to be surrounded by like minded people. And I guess wow. there's a lot in this community. So, <laughs> yeah. Commute, computer science at Cambridge of all places. That's quite an impressive. <laughs> well, I kind of feel like it. <laughs> yeah. What kind of like. Anyway. What kind of. <laughs> What kind of computers do they have there? They must have like some of the top of the line stuff that you get to play around on. 
uh not really <laughs> at least not an undergrad oh. they probably do postgrads and like if they're doing more about just undergrad just had normal machines <laughs> oh. <laughs> although they did have dual boot linux which made me happy although it was ubuntu oh, really? so uh -huh. but you know <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. My uh, yeah, my brother's doing computer science up at Aberystwyth University, and um, I think one of the professors um, at that university designed the Tux Penguin. Oh, nice. <laughs> which is, it, it, I don't know if they teach at the university or whether or not they were just there for a presentation that I saw, but yeah, um, they, yeah that's quite. Uh, <laughs> I quite I quite like um, I quite I quite I quite wish I could have gone to Aberystwyth. I didn't get the grades because I'm absolutely terrible at school things, but um, <laughs> he's a lot better than I am, so he managed to get into it because it's by the beach as well. Which is uh, nice. always a win. <laughs> which is always nice, yeah. The closest I've ever been to Cambridge is myself is Norwich, but Norwich is beautiful. I love Norwich. Mm -hmm. Did um, I? I really like the Rocky theme tune on your channel. That came together really nicely. Wait, what's that one? <laughs> uh, the Rocky theme tune. The um, oh, Eye of the Tiger. I was, yeah okay yeah <laughs> yeah that's fun I like that one <laughs> that, yeah that came together yeah you, I mean your music's really nice actually I was I I mean I I don't want to I I don't want to do open source a disservice but I gotta say that that like does look super professional and <laughs> like even with this channel that I do here like this it's a rough around the edges almost kind of by design like Linux does have this sort of culture of well, it doesn't look too great, but it does the job really, really well. It's changing now. There are some absolutely amazing themes that are out there. Um, I, I use the Arc theme. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's a nice, very sleek, very like it's a black, um, flat theme. Oh, it, it makes Windows 10 look horrendously <laughs> ugly. Um, mm. This is this is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> But it it doesn't seem like Linux. Linux shouldn't like Linux. Really, shouldn't be smooth, in my opinion. It should be. <laughs> it should be you know it should be like like sort of snappy like to me xfce the the desktop environment is like to me the epitome of what linux is it's like highly customizable fast it doesn't look amazing but with a few tweaks you can get it to look quite nice and that's um you know that's that's sort of where, where i am with it what's uh your desktop environment of choice i forgot to ask uh cinnamon <laughs> oh the, cinnamon yeah just use that with it how's that uh, how's that working well, fine, does the job again. <laughs> Looks quite <laughs> nice, doesn't get in my way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I quite like that about Linux though, because if you want, you know, if you really don't care about what anything looks like, you can just have your little speedy solution that just does what you want. But then if you're a person who likes to wow people, you can find other things and you can get as bloated or as small a distribution as you like really and, That's and it, yeah. yeah, just <laughs> But yeah, very much more rather than one size fits all, which is what the other ones all kind of come in. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot, a lot of comments um, coming up about um, independent learning. Yeah, I, I got to admit, like tests. I don't know. Like I'm not necessarily too bad at tests. I'm just bad in the whole academic, <laughs> in the whole academic th sphere of things. Tests are actually not too bad. I'm sort of mediocre at tests, but it's everything else that I'm. You know, I, I, I know. I, you know, I was. A, awkward teenager and just like you know the the formalized education just doesn't stick and i you know like with me what i really you know with me with computers it was it was tinkering around around with free and open source software that really was 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 how i got on and, and learned it and mm. uh, and i'm so, like i i you know i, I got a job you know i got a job in computers now don't have like a single serious qualification in computers now because of of word and mouth and 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 uh, you know i live in a small village where there aren't really that many people who are good with computers so a captive, uh, <laughs> captive audience. There. Yeah. Yeah. It's and I, I think I agree with Q Edwards's point. Actually, the standardization of testing, um, you know, really, it sort of stifles the uh, it stifles intellectual curiosity as well. So, like for mm -hmm. example, if you're only ever being taught about Windows, um, you're going to get more and more entrenched in Windows, and then you're going to be more reluctant to to try out new things, especially yep. when you're older. Yeah, I definitely noticed that now I'm now I'm getting older. <laughs> just picking up new habits, just trying to to drop bad habits and pick up new ones is so much more difficult than it was ten years ago. Uh, or um, you know, or even less than that in the last five years. It's sort of as I'm approaching thirty now. It's um, crikey, it's just not. A <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's also there's very much a case of learning for the tests that 
is the, like a culture of it and I don't know whether it's becoming more and more like that now but it kind of is that things aren't really done for enjoyment it's done to pass a test and if something's not on your test what's the point of doing it which I guess is why we never learn about anything else in ICT apart from Microsoft because mm. this is what's going to help you in your exams like you don't really need to know about <laughs> these other niche things that even though it would be fun I, like I, maybe I'm biased but it would be fun to learn about it it's like yeah, yeah. I always found yeah. out the things that I weren't being officially taught in I enjoyed the most <laughs> like Definitely, the instruments yeah. that I didn't have lessons in I loved to practice for some reason the maths module I wasn't being taught in I loved doing <laughs> but yeah the rest of it when it's like forced at you it just automatically feels like Ugh, maybe I don't want to do it <laughs> yeah um, yeah it's it, learning is a bit like like going into a swim pool it's kind of cold at first and if you get put you know if you get pushed in it's not going to be any fun but if you go in at your own accord you've got you know it's a bit more you know and and i think when when you're learning on your own terms in a more sort of relaxed or suitable environment you absorb more information anyway so mm. i yeah. mean it's 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 the one size fits all approach that doesn't you know yeah <laughs> the very tricky issues <laughs> yeah but then that's where open source just comes into its own because it can it can mold and fit and be customized mm. in for, to to suit so many different kinds of people in so many different kinds of working in, environments i've got a, a spare laptop that I loan out to people that need it. Um, and what I did is I um, d I copied a an ISO image directly onto the hard disk uh, of this laptop so that I've got like a, it's a persistent live, no, it's a non-persistent distribution. It's a live CD. Um, and then it resets, it completely resets the laptop, it gets rid of all the information on it uh, every time it's turned off. So I can now lend that laptop out to someone they can use it to do whatever it is they need to do. And then it gets wiped before it even gets back to me. So it's completely, mm -hmm. you know, they're completely in control of the information yeah. that, that they, they're using the computer with. Um, you could never do that on Windows. You know, that's just... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and also the remote desktop stuff is just so much easier in Linux as well. So yeah, I've not tried much of that myself. But... <laughs> no. But I, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite, I was quite intrigued to find out that are you familiar with PowerShell, which is the command line for Windows? Yeah, well, I am. my fiancé does a lot of work with that, so I've heard a bit about it, but I haven't first-hand yeah. experience at all, but yeah. But they're they're open-sourcing it. Which... Oh, yes, no, I saw that. Yeah, that looked interesting. <laughs> yeah, and I think, do you, do you know, here's, here's, a, here's a conspiracy theory, but it is a, <laughs> it is very much a tinfoil hat conspiracy theory, right? And, and, and I'd like to hear what the commenters have to say about this, right? But I think that Microsoft may become Linux in a way, right? And here's what, all right, because clearly Microsoft want to make money through their app store and they're, they're definitely, they definitely seem to, to not want to keep, make money from their licensing. Now, obviously they license some servers and some like administration machines and whatnot, but they also give a lot of their um, versions away either a discounted price or for free like their student edition or their OEM editions and so forth but if they intend to shift their model to an app store model there really is no point in them maintaining their own kernel so if they start open sourcing the stuff that they don't make money on maybe get a bit of you know free community support involvement maybe as a bit of good graces to the open source and Linux community and then piece by piece, you know, today it's PowerShell. Uh, was there a, a, a language that they open sourced uh, that Microsoft did? I know that Apple sure. open sourced Swift. Um, but I, I don't, Microsoft have been like open sourcing a few things from time to time. <laughs> and, you know, if, if they're going to, you know, if, if they just send all of their, their kernel stuff upstream, is there, is there e even a point? I mean, there's no point. They're not closing anyone out. Um, it makes their it makes their software work on more machines with less work. Um, if I was if I was Mr. Microsoft, I'd be doing it. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess it's how much. Yeah, how how I long mean, their holds gonna stay on the market, right? Because Apple have gained loads in the last few years, haven't they? So they have if, if it's a like oh, if it's gonna carry on like that, then maybe they're being left behind. But if not, yeah. I guess it's still. And I, I think there is a possibility. No one believes me when I say this, right? Because <laughs> I'm I'm full of like crazy theories. <laughs> but um, I reckon SteamOS could cut into the market. I genuinely think it, it could. Now a lot of people are saying SteamOS is off to a slow start, and I absolutely 100% agree. As is the Steam boxes. 
But Steam is 13 years old. So Valve, are def they, they play the long game. So Steam OS might not be heard of for, for the next five years. And then it might just come back up as a resurgence about then. Uh, and if they've got a decent GNOME desktop and you know big picture mode, they can get the price point down to something reasonable, build up a few more games in the library, although there are over 2,000 games for Linux now. So oh, wow. you know, I've, I've, yeah, I've stopped looking for new games on there. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's gotten to the point where I can see a game on like a Let's Play or, um, or any kind of review, and I can type it into Steam, and there's a pretty good chance that there will be a Linux port for it, um, especially That's the kind good. of games I like. Um, yeah, gaming on Linux is like is, is amazing. Like thousands upon thousands of games, um, and and it's, I think like released in the last month alone, it's um, it's it's absolutely remarkable. So in a couple, of, you know, in a, in a couple of years' time, I think we might see a like a, a small steady market share, maybe on par with Linux as a whole, and then it, it you know it would uh, possibly possibly sneak in, especially if Microsoft decide to to make their distribution. You know, worse. Uh, <laughs> well, they're they're due for a worse one every other release, aren't they? So the next one's going to be showing. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I can't work out whether or not Windows Seven, uh, Windows Ten is a good one or a bad one because Windows Eight and Eight Point One were, were bad. Were they, would you yeah, say they're they both bad. bad? Yeah. <laughs> and well, apparently, Windows uh, Seven. Well, Windows XP was great. Windows Seven was all right. You know, mm -hmm. Windows Vista was shocking. Windows Eight was shocking. I don't know. I've heard mixed things about Windows 10. Some people seem to quite like it. Others are having lots of problems with it. I think its yeah. update system seems to mess a lot of people around. Oh, yes. About, and no yeah. one uses Cortana. <laughs> it's, you know, I, I'm not surprised. People don't like talking to their computers because it's like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you've, you've lost all your privacy, haven't you? Like, type, you know, if you're, you know, like, um, a lot, you know, a lot of people probably don't want so, like I Google dumb or not Google, I use don't don't go, but you know the the whole the corporate hold on the the, the verb <laughs> Google is, is, is yeah tight. Um, but I, I I search for some really dumb stuff like um, you know do flies hibernate and so you know <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I don't you know I don't want that. <laughs> I, I like I don't want to like be reminded of that when I start search. You know, the next time I'm up going into Google how to, and then <laughs> my my, you know, my daft previous suggestions come up. <laughs> <laughs> Windows ninety eight SE was the best, says Q Edwards. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think. See, I didn't even like Windows XP when that came out. They changed the file system to NTFS, and that made like. A third of my games stopped working at the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> nightmare! <was Like>, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I remember my mum had Windows ninety five when I was young, so I remember using that. Paint was the, my favourite thing. You know, I'd sit mm. there for hours <laughs> doing like one dot at a time, making a nice picture. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I haven't really used the more more recent versions apart from at school, where it'd be extra frustrating because obviously there's all their security systems to stop you doing anything. So as yeah. much as Windows would normally bug me for being like, are you sure you want to go in this folder? I'm like, yes, that's why I clicked on it. It's <laughs> nagging me. Um, the, all the extra stuff about you literally can't do anything. That uh, yeah, that used to frustrate mm. me a lot. So I haven't had much yeah. experience with it recently. But yeah, see, I'm always shocked whenever I cross come across a bug because I I feel like this is a hundred pound piece of software. Why do it's you have true. bugs? And it's like some of the most ridiculous ones as well. I think I was using. Um, the office database i can't remember what it's called the office suite database thing and oh, every well, time you press cancel on a dialog it would crash out oh right. it's like ah. that's not even a small bug like that's really bad <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i used to use it as you know uh backup evidence for why linux was better <laughs> and everyone just rolled their eyes but yeah. <laughs> yeah and i gotta say when it comes when it comes to linux it doesn't matter if I'm doing the most basic command, but doing it on the command line terminal does make me feel like a hacker. <laughs> like, there is no, you know, I've got, yeah. uh, what's my color theme? So, I've, yeah, I've got the green text on the black background. Of course I do. But it's, um, yeah, it's, I don't yeah. know. It, it just feels like it feels really satisfying to do a, a command. <laughs> Yeah, and especially if you're like on the bus or in the bar or something. Like the bar at uni, you're just there. Like I know everyone can see the fact I'm just using text editors, and I had yeah. like three Emacs windows at the time when I was trying to learn Emacs, and I swiftly gave up. But like you know, it was cool while I had it. So. 
yeah yeah i think there was one time i was a bit younger and a bit more um showy offy and i did <laughs> have um and this is when netbooks were quite big yeah. and i had um Linux on netbook, uh, what was it? It was only Ubuntu or something, uh, but it had a music player that was in the command line. And I'm pretty sure I just played my playlist on the command line so that anyone looking over my shoulder was like, oh, what's he <laughs> Whoa, magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Linux hipster. <laughs> mm. uh, so thanks for, sh thanks for uh, having a chat. Thanks it's for inviting me. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, so all of you guys watching this should go and check out the channel if you want to see what open source, if you want to hear what open source music sounds like. Uh, it's a really good channel. I'm really impressed with it. Um, and like, you know, across the board as well, and not just the open source side of things as well, like your lighting's great and the sound quality is amazing. Definitely worth checking out. Excellent stuff. And all free and open source, uh, all done on yep. free and open source software. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Creative Excellent. Commons as well. Yep. Awesome. So um, thanks very much for you guys in the uh, in the chat for uh, for joining us. Um, I'm going to close off the stream now, but thank you, uh, thank you very much for uh, for passing by. Um, I'll be editing this podcast, and it'll be going up. Uh, this will be going up on the channel and the podcast place where I put the podcasts, the SoundCloud. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, because this is like a nice Linuxy one, I thought let's have it on the ch the main channel. So. Um, that's about it for me today. Um, Emily, do you want to do an outro? Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for listening, everyone. Um, I, you can, yeah. <laughs> apparently, no, I can't do an outro. <laughs> you can find my channel at www.emilyfoxmusic.co.uk. And there's a link there. And see you soon. Okay. Goodbye.